So after years of seeing the feature on Android phones, Apple has finally brought always on display to the iPhone with the 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max. But being Apple, they did it a little differently, having not just the widgets and notifications on the screen, but also the full on wallpaper, which while it does look nice, in theory, having the wallpaper on there should drain the iPhone's battery more than having a black background like it is on Android phones, since all those extra pixels displaying the wallpaper are technically eating up battery. But of course, when it comes to optimization, nobody does it better than Apple. With the 14 Pro's new display being able to ramp itself all the way down to 1 hertz compared to the Galaxy's or even the previous iPhone's minimum 10 hertz, while the A16 Bionic's new display engine is also supposed to make power management even more efficient. So today, we're going to put it to the test, not just with the always-on display on the iPhone on and off, but also with iOS 16.2's new option to disable the wallpaper, and of course, later in the video, actually testing it against an Android phone in the Galaxy S22 Ultra. So we have a lot to cover. Let's get right into it. This episode is sponsored by Caseku, who sent over their new Magic Stand case for the iPhone 14 series, which unlike a lot of the other transparent MagSafe cases on the market, instead of just having the MagSafe outline on the back here, this one actually has a function with it pulling out and acting as a kickstand, allowing you to set your iPhone down in both portraits and in landscape modes. And yes, when the stand is closed, it still fully works with MagSafe accessories. In fact, I would say that the kickstand's magnets on here feel a little bit stronger than the ones of tried on other cases. Now, to make this work, Casecube made the kickstand super thin with a small indention under that ring. So that way, when you flip it closed, it still sits fully flush with the rest of the back. And even though the kickstand is really thin, Casecube says it can be opened more than 30,000 times without taking any damage, just like the phone, since the case has a raised lip over the front and the camera housing and the specially developed transparent crystal material on the back not only strengthens the structure of the case, but it also prevents the case from yellowing. Get yours for 10% off using the exclusive link down below in the description. All right, so all three iPhones here have been factory reset to iOS 16.2. We haven't installed any apps on them, we haven't logged into iCloud, and we're turning on airplane mode. So that way, the only variables that we're actually testing are the always on display with a wallpaper, the always on display with just text in the middle, and the always on display being completely off to act as a control for your normal standby train. Now, in this first test, we've calibrated the lights in the lab down to 150 lux. This is supposed to be the equivalent of what you'd get in indoor lighting, which I think is important to test here since the iPhone's display display does adjust its brightness depending on your environment, with dimmer rooms naturally allowing the screen to be dimmer, which in theory would save on battery life. And after eight hours, man, did it do that. The iPhone with a wallpaper only drops two points down to 98. The text only iPhone surprisingly matched that performance with it also dropping down to 98. And then the iPhone with the display completely off acting as a control is still showing 100%. But that was kind of an easy test, right? In this next one, we have turned the lights all the way up to 1000 lux this time, which is closer to the amount of light that would hit your phone on an overcast day. So the screens obviously have to go way brighter here in order to remain visible, which should net a bigger difference. But after eight hours, wow, the results are pretty much the same as it was in the first test. The wallpaper version did drain a little bit more this time with a three point drop, while the text only version stayed consistent, dropping by two points once again. Now, as impressive as these results are, the iPhone iPhone has been known to kind of overrepresent on its battery life early on. So we decided to keep this test going to see if we could get a more definitive result. We ended up going for a full 24 hours where after literally an entire day, the iPhone with the colorful wallpaper dropped by 20 points down to 80%. The text only version this time did significantly better with a 16 point drop down to 84, while the iPhone with the display off is still somehow showing 100%. But there you have it. If you have an iPhone with the always on display with a wallpaper, you're looking at roughly 0.8% extra drain per hour, like in a really bright environment. Whereas if you turn that wallpaper off and just use the text only version of the always on display, you're looking at an extra 0.6% per hour. Keep in mind, this is over 24 hours of testing. And you know, most of the time, the always on display in real life might actually be turned off since when it's in your pocket or even when you walk far enough away from it, the display does disable. But 
it's time. It's time to compare the iPhone to the Galaxy, which doesn't have an option for the full screen wallpaper. So we're gonna compare it to the iPhone with the wallpaper turned off, where one thing worth noting is the Galaxy does shift that clock widget around over time, presumably to prevent burn-in, while the iPhone's clock widget pretty much stays put. I don't know if Apple just isn't worried about burn-in or if that should be a concern, but either way, after a full day of testing, the phones actually match each other's performance, with both of them dropping down to 84. But the interesting thing here is when you actually subtract the normal standby drain for each phone, which was five points on the Galaxy and apparently zero on the iPhone, technically speaking, the Galaxy's always on display itself used up a smaller percentage of its battery at just 11% compared to the iPhone's full 16%. Either way, that is it for me in this video. Thank you for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the very next episode.